Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about pottery workshops today. Last year I made big plans. I had all these workshops planned out in different places on different subjects. I was gonna really hit the workshops hard. And then the plague happened and most of those workshops were canceled. I got a good one in in March, just before everything shut down. I had one in October uh, with one student. Hey Ken, so this year I'm hoping to do better and I'm thinking hard about how to schedule pottery workshops in a way that they will actually come off. So today I'm going to talk to you about the plans I'm making for workshops, also show you some of the steps I'm taking to make sure that you know these workshops go off in a safe and good way and people have a good time. Next week, I have my very first virtual Zoom workshop going on. Uh, so what I've done here in my workshop to get ready for it is I've got this second workbench here that I just ordered and put together this week. And that'll give me some place to set my computer and things like that on while I'm working on the other bench. That way the computer isn't exposed to water or clay, things like that. Uh, but yet I can look up, I can see the screen, I can see what students are doing, I can see uh, what I look like. Uh, so that's gonna be important. I also made sure I had all the right software installed, everything was working. I have this, um, this is a little arm that I can attach a camera to so that then I can get up over my work area and shoot down to show exactly what I'm working on real close for the workshop. I had to make sure I had good Wi-Fi out here. So I'm excited about that. I've been making plans for that all week and I think I'm just about ready. And then one of the other things I did to get ready for my virtual workshop was I had to make sure the students, no matter where they lived, had the materials and the tools they needed to go through the steps to make pottery. So I made a bunch of pookies. Uh, I got clay, I processed, this is ground and tempered clay. Uh, it just needs to be mixed with water. And then I got some red uh, iron ochre, mixed it with a little bit of clay to make sure it hardens good. And so I put all these things together. They also got a, a pottery polishing stone and a gourd scraper. I got those all boxed up and mailed out this week. This is my first Zoom workshop. We'll see how it goes. I have no idea um, you know, what to expect, having never done it before. This is my, my double pot you might have seen on my previous video. And it's still, I just haven't had much time because I've been dealing with workshop preparations and stuff. I smoothed it a little, but it's still drying. So um, I'm going to need to wrap this up before I go. And that's the next thing is uh, uh, because a lot of the venues uh, canceled on me last year um, because they didn't, they weren't sure that, you know, hosting a workshop was a good idea. People might get sick. And, you know, I don't want people to get sick any more than people want to get sick. Um, but I think an outdoor venue is the best. One where we can stay socially distanced but still learn pottery. And so I have this property well, with a big Indian ruin on it and I'm wanting to set that up as a place to hold outdoor workshops. It's way out in the country uh, so it, you know it's kind of out there but at the same time you really get the feel for what life might have been like 700 years ago. I think it's a good place to hold these but I have to make some improvements. So when I bought it it was 40 acres of land that was covered with mesquite scrub and so this week, uh, we're going out there, and I'm going to put in a septic tank. We're clearing land so that there's a place to park RVs and cars and such. Uh, I'm going to put in a gate, you know, so we can lock it up or whatever. And I'm going to be going out there and making some improvements. Unfortunately, uh, there's bad weather this week. They're forecasting rain uh, for at least today and tomorrow and possibly snow on Tuesday. Should make it uh, especially challenging. But I, I have to do it. I have to get these things done because that's where... The other, the two in-person workshops I have scheduled this year, uh, the one in March and the one in October, are going to be held out at the property. So um, a little bit primitive environment as far as, you know, we're not inside, there's no heating and air conditioning. But I have an RV uh, that we can hook up so we have toilets and sinks and those kind of things. So we won't be completely primitive. And uh, I, think, I think it'll be a good experience for everybody uh, because the ruins are right there. We can look at the ruins, we can find... Uh, ancient sherds to be inspired by. We can go back and recreate those. I want you to come with me while I go out there and um, you know, work on the property and I'll show you uh, what I have and, and how it's gonna be set up.
So here I am out at my property. Um, I bought this place a few years back. It's 40 acres, but it was just covered in mesquite, so you couldn't even get off the road hardly. So I've had this, I've had them install, uh, I've, had them, <laughs> I've had them install a culvert here and put a road through. The road has a loop on it, so I can pull a RV up and I can turn around and get back out without having to back up or do anything funny. Uh, and then they're installing a septic tank. I had a pottery workshop here back in October and uh, this work was supposed to be done before then and uh, for various reasons it wasn't. So uh, we actually parked in the middle of the road. I parked my trailer up there and we had the workshop pretty much on the side of the road. So in the March workshop, uh, we'll be all set. We'll have this road in here. We'll have place, we got at least a couple of RVs coming for that. And we'll have some place to dump our sewage. And uh, so we're, we're making progress on making this someplace that we can have workshops. And the real advantage, the real advantage to that is that, um, one, it's outdoors. So there's less likelihood of anybody getting sick. And two, since I own the location, uh, you know, it can't be canceled. Uh, nobody's gonna charge me for use of the venue. Uh, now there's not a lot of facilities out here you know, that people might want, but I can put up shade. Uh, I can set up folding tables and chairs. Uh, you know, we can make it pretty comfortable, I think. And, uh, and it's mine. And besides that, there's a ruin right here. So people can go look at ancient sherds, get some inspiration, feel like they're making pottery in the same spot where ancient people made pottery. This is where the leach field will be. Uh, this is the pile of dirt that came out of the hole where the septic's going and there, is the hole where the septic tank is going to be set. Hopefully that may come today. So we're waiting to hear whether the septic is going to be delivered today or not. How can we tell where the ruin is? Well, I don't know if you can notice there's a mound here. There's a definite mound that kind of runs out in this area. And that's what happens when adobe walls start to crumble and just basically melt away over the course of centuries. So adobe is just mud. Uh, it's just mud that's laid up into walls, unfired mud. Uh, and so over the years, then adobe will erode and just kind of turn into a mound of earth. So this earth was all hauled in here to build walls back in 1350 or whenever this house was built. And then over the intervening centuries, those adobe walls have melted into this mound that we see here. We can also find rock alignments. <clears throat> so the walls were all adobe, but the foundations were stone. And you can see those in places out here too. Not to mention the artifacts. Nobody knows what the village was called back in 1300 when people lived here. But we do know that the name for these mountains, Chiricahua, uh, we have a, that is a native name. And it's not Apache, although the word Chiricahua is associated with Apaches. It's actually Opata, who were the settled farming people that lived near here. The Opata word Chiricahua means uh, mountain of wild turkeys. So I've just taken that and changed it a little bit for the name of this village. I call it Chiwichi, which means wild turkey place. So these are mountains of the wild turkey and I've named the village wild turkey place. Um, this actually is, that runs out of the mountains here, this is actually tur what's called Turkey Creek. I don't know if the name Turkey Creek has any relation to the name of the mountains, but um, it was obviously named because there were a lot of wild turkeys in the Chiricahuas, and there still are some. But Turkey Creek is a mile and a half north of here. So what was this village doing here? There's no creek. Uh, some people believe that the wash, the dry wash that runs past this village now was actually Turkey Creek before about 1830, and then it changed its course and moved north. So this creek behind me, some believe, was actually Turkey Creek before about 1830. Today, it's dry most of the year. and Turkey Creek flows most of the time. One of the clues for this is that along this creek, this dry creek, there are numerous ancient Indian villages. But along Turkey Creek, there's almost none. So it seems odd that these people would be living on this dry creek and ignoring the wetter Turkey Creek, <clears throat> just a mile and a half north. The really big ruin, three miles west of here, called Kaikendal, which was excavated back in the 60s, sits on this creek. 
not on Turkey Creek. My plans for this property are to slowly develop it into something a little more substantial. So right now I'm getting the septic put in and I'm also working on putting a fence around it to keep the cows off because the cows uh, not only have overgrazed this land something fierce, uh, but they're also destroying the ruin. They're trampling artifacts. Uh, they're breaking down, you know, those mounds that I talked to you about. Um, so keeping the cows out would be another step towards protecting the ruin. Uh, after that, I hope to put some kind of a barn or shed building up that's large enough that we could hold workshops inside of it in inclement weather uh, that I can lock up tools and whatnot and then hopefully eventually uh, build a small house or cabin so that I have some place to stay when I'm out here. Uh, and so uh, as time goes by, it will become more and more established as a place where I can teach pottery uh, and uh, bring people out here and tour the ruins with them. Okay, uh, we got the septic tank planted in the ground and um, I got a little bit of work done on the fence, but it is freezing out here. 40 some degrees, windy. So I think I'm gonna head back to Tucson and uh, finish this up at another time. first day of the Zoom workshop, uh, I tell you what, uh, I might have taught a lot of pottery workshops, but I'm learning a lot about Zoom on this one. So uh, it's educational for me as well as the students. Um, but just like doing YouTube videos, you know, I started doing it. Uh, I had to learn about how to use cameras. I had to learn about how to use microphones. I had to learn about editing video, uploading to YouTube. So this Zoom is like that. There's, you know, it's a whole bunch of new stuff to learn, but uh, I'm making progress. Hopefully uh, tomorrow, uh, everything will turn out smoother than today because we had some Wi-Fi issues today. Everybody made a good pot. This is the pot I made. So tomorrow we'll be scraping, smoothing, polishing on these. So if you're interested in one of my workshops, uh, I'll put a link down the doobly-doo to how you can learn more about my pottery workshops, both in person, online, and virtual. I appreciate you coming along on this adventure with me today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.